Welcome to the Tim Booker channel, where wisdom deserves to be shared. Wishing you a pleasant listening experience. Today, I'll be decoding, the Talmud, for you. I'll delve into the essence of the book and explore the wisdom that can be gained from the Jewish perspective on wealth. When it comes to wealth, there's a classic saying about the Jewish people, the money of the world is in the pockets of Americans, but the money of Americans is in the pockets of Jews. It's noteworthy that Jews make up only 0.3% of the world's population, yet they hold the reins of the global economy. According to Wealth Magazines, half of the world's richest entrepreneurs are Jewish. Contrary to misconceptions, Jews haven't had any inherent advantages. Instead, they have endured centuries of persecution, facing hardships and wandering. Their astonishing wealth today is a result of their hard work and resilience. This leads me to wonder about the wisdom behind their wealth accumulation, and it was through the discovery of the Talmud that we found answers. The Talmud is a religious classic and a repository of Jewish business wisdom. If the Bible is considered foundational for Christianity, then the Talmud is the real deal for the Jews. In Jewish society, it has become an integral part of their identity. Written by around 2,000 scholars in discussions and research over a thousand years ago, the Talmud is a collective expression of concentrated thoughts and the crystallization of wisdom from numerous Jewish scholars. Now that we've covered the basics of the book and its authors, let me outline its content in three aspects. Firstly, acquiring wealth requires not squandering it, but also not hoarding it blindly. Secondly, if you're not making money, it might be because you've chosen the wrong social circles. Lastly, once you have a certain capital, engaging in a particular activity can help you earn even more, all right, let's start by looking at the first key point. If you want to accumulate wealth, you shouldn't squander it, but blindly hoarding it is also not the answer. If you were to ask me the first step in financial management, I would tell you to have money first. And how can you have money? Naturally, by saving. Since saving is inevitable, it unavoidably involves occasional clashes with frugality. Although Jewish people are known as the most money-savvy, they are incredibly frugal when it comes to spending. Despite their reputation for being tight with money, they take pride in it. They believe that meticulous calculation and utilization of money are instinctive reactions for a business person. This attitude towards money is considered a commendation of their shrewdness. Take Rockefeller, a Jewish magnate, for example. Despite his immense wealth, he was incredibly thrifty throughout his life. In his early years working as a welder in an oil company, he noticed that every time he borrowed an oil drum, there would be precisely 509d worth of iron slag dropping. Rockefeller thought about how much welding rod was wasted each time and improved the welding process to ensure that each drop of iron slag was exactly 508d. While saving just a drop of iron slag per oil drum may seem insignificant, Rockefeller's actions saved the company a staggering $570 million annually. Later in his entrepreneurial journey, Rockefeller wisely invested his hard-earned $800 in kerosene production. Through meticulous financial planning and saving, he reinvested the majority of profits into petroleum development, leading to a cycle of continuous growth. After more than 30 years of diligent management, Rockefeller became one of the largest financial conglomerates in North America, with his petroleum companies generating an annual turnover of over $110 billion. Rockefeller's philosophy on wealth accumulation can be summarized as follows, guard your wallet tightly, don't let your money go easily, and don't be afraid of being called stingy. Every penny spent should yield a profit of two pennies before it can be spent. For Jewish people, this principle of using money is crucial. They believe in using money only where it's necessary, avoiding spending money where it shouldn't be spent. This principle emphasizes the importance of being prudent with small amounts of money before thinking about making big money. To accumulate wealth, one must eliminate unnecessary expenses, especially avoiding conflating expenditures with various desires. Desires are like weeds, as long as there is vacant space, they take root and proliferate. One's desires are endless and will never be fully satisfied. If you spend your income on insatiable desires, you'll fall into a bottomless pit of cravings, preventing the accumulation of capital for prosperity. While advocating frugality, Jews also emphasize not hoarding money blindly, they encourage learning to enjoy life appropriately. Although these two viewpoints may seem contradictory at first glance, they are not. Frugality is about saving unnecessary funds, such as not satisfying unbridled desires. Simultaneously, Jews recognize that earning wealth is for a better life. 
Hoarding money without purpose can lead to extreme stinginess, fostering a mindset of poverty and eliminating opportunities for prosperity. The Talmud states that when a wealthy person has no opportunity to buy things, they consider themselves poor. Jews believe that blindly hoarding money will only make a person increasingly impoverished because, in this process, their thinking becomes impoverished. Once their thinking becomes impoverished, they are busy and confined to survival, only thinking about simple survival. Even if their actual life may not be poor, their minds no longer harbor the desire for wealth, depriving them of the conditions to become rich. Therefore, under favorable conditions, we should learn to enjoy life, savoring the process of spending money on ourselves. This is the meaningful life. So, to sum it up, the first key point we discussed today is that if you want to accumulate wealth, you shouldn't just save money but also avoid extravagance. Jews are extremely frugal with money, using it only where necessary. They believe that money should never be spent in places where it shouldn't, especially not to satisfy endless desires. In the eyes of Jews, frugality is necessary, but enjoying money is also essential. Only then will you have the mindset of a wealthy person and the ability to earn money. Alright, that concludes our discussion of the first key point, to accumulate wealth, you must not only save money but also avoid extravagance after discussing that, let's move on to the second key point. The reason you haven't been able to make money is that you've chosen the wrong social circle. Harvard University professor, Satchel Mulainson, conducted extensive research on the poor. He found that even if you give money to the poor, they still can't become wealthy. This is because prolonged poverty has ingrained a poor mindset in them. They tend to invest in credit cards, resort to high-interest loans, and use future money to solve immediate crises, trapping themselves in a cycle of financial struggles. It's evident that the poverty of the poor is not just because they lack money, it's fundamentally due to their lack of a mindset for making money. Conversely, the richness of the wealthy is not solely because they currently possess a large amount of wealth but because they inherently have a mindset for earning wealth. The Talmud states that to become wealthy, you must learn from the rich. By mingling with the wealthy, even if only briefly, you'll catch a whiff of their success. Jews believe that frequent interaction with the rich, learning from their experiences, can provide valuable insights and opportunities for wealth. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with the poor, besides learning how to be frugal, you won't gain much else. There's a story about a poor man who offered to work for a rich man for three years without pay, just for food and shelter. After three years, the poor man left the rich man's home without a clear direction. Ten years later, the formerly poor man returned, now extremely wealthy, while the once rich man seemed somewhat impoverished. When the rich man offered to buy the poor man's experience for a large sum, the poor man laughed, revealing that he had earned money using the experience he gained from the rich man. The poor man had learned the rich man's ways during his three years of labor. This story emphasizes the importance of learning from the wealthy. To become rich, you must first learn from those who are already wealthy to gain their experiences. There's another story about two brothers, Theo and Carl, running a retail store. Despite their hard work, the business was not thriving, and their income was meager. Wondering why some people make money while others don't, they decided to explore the streets. They discovered a small shop with a flourishing business. Upon closer inspection, they noticed a conspicuous red sign outside, offering customers a 3% discount on goods with the presentation of a mid-year consumption invoice. Theo and Carl quickly understood that this shop's success was attributed to customers wanting to take advantage of the 3% free shopping mid-year. Inspired by this business strategy, they returned to their store and implemented a similar offer, advertising a 3% discount on all goods, guaranteeing the lowest prices in the city, with the option to claim a price difference if found lower elsewhere. As a result, their small shop soon became prosperous. Besides actively integrating into wealthy circles and learning their ways, or gaining life experiences, you also need to use your intelligence to expand your mindset. Jews often say, there are plenty of receipts, but the regret is that your pocket is too small. If your thinking is broad enough, your wallet will grow with it. In 1910, a large number of Jews immigrated to North America. Initially, they, along with immigrants from England, Spain, and Portugal, engaged in simple manual labor. However, as they secured their livelihoods, they leveraged their good education to seek decent, well-paying jobs with lucrative prospects. After several decades, many of them became millionaires. 
Among every ten Jewish immigrants to North America, only one was a blue-collar worker, while the rest became property owners. This difference in destiny arises from a difference in mindset. Those with a wealthy mindset, relying on their wisdom, become rich. Meanwhile, those with a poor mindset resort to physical labor for survival. This example also provides insight into work achievements. Work accomplishments shouldn't be measured by the time spent or the quantity of work but by the actual results achieved through effective labor. Therefore, as an ordinary office worker, finding ways to improve your work performance is the most effective way to earn money. Wealth is undoubtedly acquired through the intelligence of the brain. Relying on physical labor alone won't lead to substantial wealth. In an era increasingly valuing knowledge, wise individuals are destined to rule the world. However, it's essential to clarify that wisdom, in the eyes of the Jews, is not just knowledge. Knowledge can be divided into dead wisdom and living wisdom. Dead wisdom is useless, and true wisdom lies in the ability to turn knowledge into wealth. In other words, if you have a master's or PhD degree but can't use your knowledge to earn money, you are merely a scholar with abundant knowledge, not a wise person. On the contrary, if you are a poor person without much education but can become wealthy through your skills, Jews will admire you because you truly possess the wisdom to make money. To transform knowledge into wealth, you need to prioritize information and learn to think. In this age of information, everything can be represented and replaced by information. Information is the greatest wealth of this era. Sensitize yourself to information and react quickly and appropriately. Furthermore, you must learn to think. The highest level of wisdom is achieved through understanding and mastering knowledge, and applying it comprehensively. It requires acute intuition, a broad perspective, and an open mind. Alright, that concludes the second point I shared with you today, the reason you haven't been able to make money is that you've chosen the wrong social circle. The fundamental cause of poverty is a lack of a mindset for making money. Therefore, to make money, you should learn from the wealthy. Only by learning first can you gain their experiences. Additionally, you need to make yourself wiser, learn to turn knowledge into wealth, and place importance on information and thinking, now let's take a look at the last key point for today. Once you have accumulated some capital, there's something you can do to earn even more. Earlier, we discussed the wisdom of making money among the Jews. After following these rules, you might have acquired a certain amount of capital. Now, what should you do to make your capital grow like a snowball rolling downhill? Let's see how the Jews have done it. There was a Jewish man named Joseph who managed a large hotel. In 1825, Joseph invested in a small insurance company called Aetna Fire. The profit from this investment came from collecting fees paid by policyholders. In other words, as long as there was no fire, the business would be consistently profitable. However, shortly after, a major fire broke out in New York. Investors gathered at Joseph's Hotel, desperate and willing to relinquish their shares voluntarily. Seeing this situation, Joseph buried all their shares, saying he would sell the hotel to cover the insurance costs but with a condition, significantly raising the fees in the future. Joseph took a gamble on the future, and the success or failure depended on this single move. Later, Joseph gathered $100,000, sent an agent to New York to handle the compensation, and unexpectedly, the agent returned with a large sum of cash. These funds were from new insurance clients paying double the original fees. Simultaneously, the reliable credit of Aetna Fire Insurance resonated in New York. Leveraging this insurance, Joseph made a profit of $150,000. This story tells us that seizing critical moments can often turn crises into lucrative opportunities. This is also a piece of wisdom passed down by Jews, be adept at taking risks. According to them, to succeed in anything, there are two possibilities, success and failure. In other words, everything involves risks, varying only in magnitude. The greater the risk, the higher the absolute value of returns. However, this doesn't mean blindly taking risks. Instead, you need to observe and analyze market trends and seize opportunities. Only then will you not find yourself saying, I could have done that too, when others succeed. In addition to daring to take risks, you also need to broaden your perspective. As the Talmud says, taking a few extra steps will reveal more scenery. After World War II, the victorious nations established the United Nations. To construct the UN headquarters, world leaders continuously negotiated funding matters. It was then that a Jewish man, Rockefeller, 
said, Our family is willing to contribute $8.7 million to buy a piece of land in New York and donate it unconditionally to the United Nations. This statement left people astonished, and they couldn't help but wonder, why spend so much money to buy land and donate it to the United Nations for free? What they didn't know was that when the Rockefeller family bought the land and donated it to the UN, they also acquired all the surrounding land at a lightning speed. Later, the UN building rose, and the surrounding land prices skyrocketed. People then realized how wise Rockefeller's decision was, as no one could calculate how much profit the Rockefeller family made from the land around the UN building, far exceeding the initial $8.7 million. Clearly, those who understand how to make money take the first few steps that we usually can't anticipate. Their true intentions often become apparent when things are nearing completion. However, by then, it's already the end. Therefore, learn to look a few steps ahead. Deciding whether you can make money often depends on how far you can envision the future. This concludes the third point I shared with you today, once you have accumulated some capital, there's something you can do to earn even more. Some people tell us to dare to take risks because every risk carries the seed of an equal amount of success, and the greater the risk, the higher the return. But taking risks isn't blind, we need to be good at observing and analyzing market trends, seizing opportunities, and learning to look a few steps ahead. Alright, with that, we've covered the content for today. Let's recap what we shared with you. First, to acquire wealth, you shouldn't be extravagant, but you also shouldn't hoard money blindly. Jews are extremely frugal with money, always using it where it's necessary. They believe in the necessity of subtraction, but also in the enjoyment of money. Only then will you possess a wealthy mindset and, consequently, be able to make money. Second, we discussed that the reason you haven't been able to make money is that you've chosen the wrong social circle. The fundamental cause of poverty is a lack of a mindset for making money. Therefore, to make money, you should learn from the wealthy. Only by learning first can you gain their experiences. Additionally, you need to make yourself wiser, learn to turn knowledge into wealth, and place importance on information and thinking. Lastly, we talked about once you have accumulated some capital, there's something you can do to earn even more. Jews tell us to dare to take risks because every risk carries the seed of an equal amount of success, and the greater the risk, the higher the return. But taking risks isn't blind, we need to be good at observing and analyzing market trends, seizing opportunities, and learning to look a few steps ahead. Congratulations, you've completed another book. Thank you for your support and attention. Please subscribe to the Tim Booker channel for audiobooks. Like and share with your family and friends. Wisdom deserves to be spread, opening the way to a beautiful future. Thank you, and goodbye.